Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. If you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. This week we've got something we haven't done in a while, a skirt. We've been getting skirt requests for a while and I finally got a chance to make one, so I'm happy I could fulfill that request. I love the texture on this one. I've actually been having a lot of fun playing with textures lately and I think the slip stitch ribbing looks nice in this arrowhead pattern. My mind's already swirling with ideas for the next skirt, so get subscribed so you don't miss out. And really quickly before I go, if I'm not responding as quickly as usual, please bear with me. Things are super hectic right now and it's taking everything just to get videos out, so I apologize and I will get to you guys as soon as I can. Now, I'm off to work on that very large pile of things. So, stay safe, be well, and enjoy the show. So without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I use 220 grams of yarn, or that's 550 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any 999 plus order. Watch to the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. You're using 4 stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting the skirt started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 5mm hook. Before we get started on our waistband, we're going to do a little prep work and make a guide chain to make things go as smoothly as possible. First thing we'll do is create a chain that goes from our pelvic region, think a few inches beneath your belly button, to across the widest part of our hips, ending at the middle of our back. Be sure to end on an even number, so if your number is odd, add one chain. From there, we double that number and that'll be the amount of rows we make for our waistband. Hence, guide chain. We'll be referencing this number a decent amount for this pattern, so be sure to remember it, even write it down if you have to. For me, from my pelvic region across the widest part of my hips to the middle of my back was 57. That's an odd number, so I added 1, giving me 58, which I then doubled, bringing me to a total of 116. This is the number of rows I'll be going in with for my waistband. To make our waistband, we chain up for the height we wish our waistband to be. For me, I want my waistband to be about 2.5 inches tall, that's 4 centimeters by the way, so I'm going to chain up 12. Now that I have my chain, I'm going to block off that last chain, do a chain up of 1. Into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, I'm going to insert our hook with a slip stitch. So insert, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do the next one together. Insert your hook into that next chain, yarn over, pull through everything. Put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've slip stitched into every chain, we're going to do a chain up of one. That's our turning chain. Flip our work. Insert your hook into that first back loop with a slip stitch. So insert your hook into that first back loop. Yarn over. Pull through both loops. Let's do the next one together. Insert your hook into that next back loop. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we make our way down to the end, do a chain up of one, flip our work, and repeat that for the amount of rows our guide chain told us. For me, that was 116, so if you're using my numbers, we'll be repeating this for the next 114 rows, bringing us to 160. Now that you've got the band, the height, and the length that you need it to be, it's time to seam it up. So to do that is really simple. We'll be doing outside loop slip stitches till our waistband is seamed. So how we're going to do that is insert our hook into the two corner stitches that we have. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and do a chain up of one to secure. Into the front panel, we're going to be inserting our hook into the front loop, so the loop that's closest to us. Insert your hook into that stitch, into the back panel, into the next available stitch, we're going to insert our hook into the loop that's furthest away from us, so the back loop. From here, yarn over and pull through 
all three loops on our hook. Let's do the next one together. Insert your hook into the next available stitches front loop. And then into the next available stitches back loop into the back panel. Yarn over, pull through everything. And keep doing that going all the way down. Now that we've made it down to the end, we're going to do a chain up of one. From here, we'll single crochet into every side slip stitch row to prepare for our alpines. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Into our first side slip stitch row, we're going to find that top loop that we have, insert our hook, and then single crochet like normal. Let's do the next one. My next side slip stitch is this divot. Find that top loop and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this going all the way around. Now that we've single crocheted all the way to the end, we're going to slip stitch into that chain up of one space. Insert, yarn over, and pull through everything to close off our single crochet row. To get started on our alpine detail, we'll be inserting our stitch markers into a few places to make things easier for us. First, we'll take our guide chain number, cut that in half, and subtract three. For me, I had 116 rows. I cut that in half, and that's 58. Then I took away three, and we're at 55. I inserted my stitch marker into that space on one side of my seam, and then along the other side as well. From here, we're going to start off by doing a chain up of two. This is our turning chain. We're going to start off by doing a decrease of two half double crochets. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through. Into that next stitch, pull through. We should have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four. Put one half double crochet into every stitch until we are two stitches right before our stitch marker. We have half double crocheted all the way down until we are two stitches right before our stitch marker. Into that third to last stitch, we're going to put one half double crochet, and then we're going to decrease into the second to last and into that last, so the stitch that our stitch marker is in. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull through. Insert your hook into that last stitch, pull through. We should have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four. Do a chain up of one. Flip our work, put one single crochet into every stitch, making our way back. We just single crocheted all the way down. We're going to do a chain up of three. Flip our work, and now we can get started on our alpine. So we're going to start off by yarning over and then do a decrease of two double crochets. Insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through. Insert your hook into that next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. We're now going to go in with a front post double crochet. Yarn over. Insert your hook into the second half double crochet that we have from our previous half double crochet row. You're going to skip this decrease, count up one half double crochet, and then count up two half double crochet. Insert your hook behind that second. Yarn over, pull through, pull up so that we have the same height as our decrease. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Next, we're going to do a double crochet. Yarn over, skip one stitch in the back because this front post double crochet counts as this stitch. Insert your double crochet into the next. Let's do one more set. Prepare for a front post double crochet. Skip the next half double crochet in our previous half double crochet row. Insert your hook into the next. Yarn over, pull through, yank up, 
yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Prepare for a double crochet. Skip that next stitch from our previous single crochet row, double crochet into the next. Alternate between a front post double crochet and a double crochet, making our way all the way down until we have three stitches left. So we've made our way down with our front post double and our double crochets until we have three stitches left from our single crochet row. We're gonna close this off by doing a front post double crochet and then a decrease of two double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook into that next stitch, pull through, yank up, pull through two, pull through two. We should have one stitch to skip and then do a decrease into the next two. Yarn over, insert your hook into that second to last, pull through, into that last, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. Do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then single crochet all the way down. Now that we have single crocheted all the way down, we're going to get started on our next alpine row together, which is going to be pretty much the same thing as the first. Do a chain up of three and flip our work. Start off by doing a decrease of two double crochets. Yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, pull through, into the next, pull through. Yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. Prepare for your first front post double crochet. You're going to skip that first front post double crochet from our previous alpine row. Insert our hook behind that first double crochet. Pull through, yank up, pull through two, pull through two. Prepare for a double. Skip one stitch from our previous row. Insert your double crochet into the next and keep repeating these two rows between our alpine and our single crochet row until it tapers all the way down until we have three stitches left. I'll meet you guys back to show you guys how we're going to close off our alpine detail. Now that we've made our way down to the last three stitches, what we're gonna do is a decrease of two front post double crochets combined with a half double crochet. I left off on my three single crochet row. We're going to start off by doing a chain up of three. We're going to go in with a decrease of two front post double crochets first. So yarn over, insert your hook behind that first decrease from our previous alpine row, then also underneath our front post from our previous alpine row. Yarn over, pull through, yank up, yarn over, pull through two. You should have two loops on our hook. From here, yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through. You should have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all four to close this off. Do a chain up of one and cut. And that's how we'll be ending our alpine section. Now, with this side all done, we'll be doing it again on the other side. So from this end, if you don't have stitch markers in, count six stitches, and this is going to be where we start our next alpine section. But for us, since we inserted our stitch markers earlier, we can insert our hook into that stitch, and then repeat the alpine sequence from here all the way to the other side. And before I go, here's a peek of what it should look like after a few rows. From here, you continue the alpine sequence till you come to a point on this side, and I'll meet you back when you're finished. Now that we're finished with our second alpine section, it should look a little something like this. From here, it's time to go in with the body of our skirt. To do that, we're going to grab our work and insert our hook into the bottom corner of the back side of our piece. That's the corner without the six stitch section we left available. Just for a refresher, this is the front. And this is the back. 
insert your hook into that corner. And from here, we'll single crochet twice into every side half double crochet row and one single crochet into every side single crochet row till we reach the top of our alpine section. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Let's do the first few together. This is my first side half double crochet, so I'm going to go in with two single crochets into there. There is one. There is two. This is my side single crochet row, so we're going to go in with one single crochet. The next row is a side half double crochet row, so I'll go in with two singles. And then this is my next side single crochet row, so I'll go in with one. From here, we'll be making a chain of however many single crochets we just made. So that means the amount of single crochets you did here, we're now going to chain down. For me, that was 79, so I'll be chaining 79. Now that our chain's done, do a chain up of one and insert your hook into the second chain from your hook and put one slip stitch into every chain. Into that second chain from our hook, insert, yarn over, pull through everything. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through everything. Continue with this to reach the last two stitches of this row. Now it's time to connect it to the single crochet we did around the alpine section. So into the last two stitches, we're going to do a decrease of two slip stitches. Insert your hook into that second to last chain, pull through, also into that last chain, pull through. We should have three loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through three. Into the next available stitch that we have into our alpine section, we're going to slip stitch into there to close off this first row. So insert, yarn over, pull through everything. To work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into our single crochet along our alpine and flip our work. We're going to start this row off by doing a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Insert your hook into that first back loop, pull through, into the next back loop, yarn over, pull through, all three loops. And from here, we're going to continue the sequence until we reach the corner. Now that we've made our way down to the corner, what we do is slip stitch into the last stitch into the alpine section. So insert, yarn over, pull through everything, then do a chain up of one and cut. With this side finished, we get to do it all over again, minus a chain. That means single crochet up the alpine section till you get here, being sure you do two single crochet into every side half double crochet and one single crochet into every side single crochet row. Once you're at the top, insert your hook into the slip stitch row and work your way up and down till you're at the other corner and you finish the same way too, that's slip stitching into the last alpine stitch with a chain up of one and cut. With our back panel finished, now it's time to go in with the front. To do that, we're gonna grab our work and insert our hook into the first available stitch along the waistband that we left free. From here, we're going to insert our hook. From here, we're gonna insert our yarn onto our hook. Pull through into a chain up of one to secure. And you guys guessed it, we're going to be single crocheting down the alpine section, making sure to do two single crochets into every side half double crochet row, and one single crochet into every side single crochet row. Okay, we're now at the bottom, so it's time to go in with our first back loop slip stitch row. Do a chain up of one, flip our work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Mm -hmm. 
Now that we've made our way down, we're going to slip stitch into the waistband to close off this row. So into the next available stitch, insert your hook with a slip stitch. And now to do our last slip stitch row, we're going to slip stitch into the next available stitch, flip our work, and then make our way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. When we reach the corner, do a chain up of one and cut. We have just finished going in with our three rows along one side of our alpine. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So insert your hook into the next stitch into the waistband. And then single crochet down our alpine section, putting two singles into every side half double, then one single into every side single. Flip your work when you get to the end. Do a chain up of one, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, and then repeat the same thing that we have as this side. The only difference is that we are not going to do a chain up of one and cut at the end, so I'll meet you guys back. All right, now it is fill in time. So now that we're at the bottom, do a chain up of one. Flip our work. We're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch until you are four stitches away from our middle. Then I'll meet you back and I'll show you guys how to decrease to get to the other side. Once we're four stitches from our middle, we're going to be doing four sets of back loop slip stitch decreases, or in simpler terms, we'll be doing two decreases next to each other on this side and another two on this side. So let's do the first two together. Into the fourth to last back loop, we're gonna insert our hook, pull through. Into that third to last back loop, insert your hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. And we're going to do the second one together as well. It's gonna be the same thing. So insert your hook into that second to last back loop, yarn over, pull through, and then into that last back loop, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And as you can see, we are directly in the middle after doing two decreases. So there's two more to go, which I will do right now. And now we are on the other side. From here, we're going to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, do a chain up of one, flip our work, one back loop slip stitch into every stitch while maintaining the two decreases on both ends. And we're going to keep repeating this until this middle point reaches mid thigh. Once we've reached mid thigh, we have a few decisions to make. For me, I enjoy the look and the feel of the seam being here, so I'm going to seam my skirt up now. But if you need more give, feel free to continue with these rows so you get the fit and feel that's right for you. Then seam it the way I'm about to show you. And to seam it, we're going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of one of the panels and also into the corner stitch of the other panel. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And from here, we're gonna go in with an outside loop slip stitch seam. So into the next available stitch, into the front panel, we're gonna insert our hook into the front loop or the loop that's closest to you. And then into the next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop. From there, yarn over and pull through everything. Let's do this together again. Into the next available stitch, into the front panel, insert your hook into that front loop. Into the next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything on our hook. Continue doing that going all the way down until we don't have any more stitches left. A few final touches for this will be single crocheting along the bottom for a nice clean edge. And here's how we're gonna do that. We're going to insert our hook into any one of these side slip stitch rows. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through. Do a chain up of one to secure. From here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every other side slip stitch row. So let's do the first few together. My first side slip stitch row is this divot right here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that top loop and single crochet. I'm going to skip this next raised side slip stitch row, find the next top loop and single crochet and make your way all the way around doing this, putting one into every side slip stitch row. So 
And now that we've single crocheted all the way around, slip stitch into that chain up one space. Do a chain up of one and cut. And once we have this, we are actually all done. The last thing we're going to have to do is weave in all of our ends. And we are finished with our skirt. This peak took a lot of turns while it was being created, but it was a lot of fun. Plus, we got a few more ideas out of it, so stay tuned. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us the last gift you made someone. Good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up because believe it or not, it really, really helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Those links are down below. Link to our Etsy page is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. Be sure to favorite the shop so you don't miss out on new patterns and exclusive deals. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.